Thank you. Thank you. I think it's really an honor and privilege to be here and also especially to see what you've achieved in such a short time, one and a half years, as I learned from uh, the organizers. And also, of course, to have this meeting to discuss about the challenges, which I think uh, my previous speaker said very well, and also Mrs. Razavi's own resolve when I heard her speaking, uh, to the, the clarity of thinking and the thought. I mean, I have been with you for a few years and also, of course, written about you, tweeted about you, this whole struggle. I have been writing articles. I informed my nation, very large country, with 1.3 billion people. And also, of course, we are a democracy. We are a secular democracy going through turbulent times these days. But I totally feel very committed to your struggle, to your hard work, your uh, resolve, and also I'm very confident and I am very sure that you are going to get there. I know that time is coming, it's close. I know that you will be there. However, I just wanted to say something else, but I'm going to say something which really is very important for all of us in the women's movement, in the gender equality, and also in the whole idea of uh, discrimination, exploitation, and oppression of women, which we are seeing, which we heard. The exhibition ex explained that, you know, we really, when you see all that, it's really chilling. It really raises the every hair in your hand and in your body that what kind of experience and sacrifice and the kind of, you know, uh, what all you've gone through to reach where you are today and really fighting for your rights and dignity and your honor and also freedom and democracy in your country, the kind of work that you are doing, uh, really my full admiration for that. One thing I just want to pay, uh, draw your attention to, and that is that whenever we have seen these struggles, I mean, across the globe, I'm a political scientist by training, I've been professor at the university, and also have traveled very extensively to many, many countries in, uh, in the context of women's rights issues. Uh, one thing which is very important to keep in mind and that is in struggle, women are in the line of fire, in the front line. And with your leadership, you are very well defined. You know what gender equality is, what patriarchy is, how the misogyny and sexism gets really into the political system and how women's lives get controlled. So many independence movements across the world so many struggles where women have really fought for the independence, autonomy, and right of their people. They were in the front line. They were in the line of fire. But when the power came, when the real crux of the whole issue, you know, even in our own, in, uh, you know, Indian independence movement, in the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi, women were really, they left their work, they left their homes, they, le they sacrificed the lives of their children, they sacrificed their own life, and they were in the front line. But when the power came, women were made to go back to the kitchens. They really did not. And today, as a result, in India, we are fighting to get the positions of power for women. We are only and only after 72 years of independence, we are only 16% in India's parliament. We were just 11% before this election, and we made a big noise about that. But I'm so happy that this is one unique organization in the leadership of Mrs. Razavi, that all of you, you know, women are on the top positions here. You know, you are already involved in the different levels of governance. You already know how to exercise your power. Women are already in the forefront and they are prepared to go back and take the challenge of gender equality back home. It's not easy. I'm very glad that previous speaker talked about the challenges and how you're going to confront this challenge. But what I'm very uh, you know, concerned is that unless we also open a little bit, and I want to draw our attention to a few things, like SGG5, 
know, I know I have only three minutes, but let me just say these few things. So, <laughs> because it, uh, SDG5 or CEDAW convention, or when you look at the global picture, how women have come together to talk about women's rights issues. Women rights are human rights. And when we talk about protection of human rights, when we talk about uh, women's rights, CEDAW Convention, Mr. Giuliani, your country has not signed CEDAW Convention. I think it's very important for women globally that we all must agree on some of these international conventions. And we all agree that certain things global women ask for, they demand, they have sacrificed, and they want to get it. When the, 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 when the countries and the, the nations get into the power. So I'm very, very happy to see that your leadership, in her whole speech this morning, you know, she, she really has underlined, has really explained in no uncertain terms that there is not going to be any compromise about gender equality because you have led this movement and fighting for the free Iran, you're fighting for the democratic, secular Iran, and you're fighting for Iran, which is really going to be delivering to all its people the kind of life and happiness. And finally, of course, I would like to see that, say that, and I said that last time also, that women take leadership, they can move mountains. When women are in the forefront, because the endurance, the, 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 the sheer endurance of women, the sheer ability to go through every possible uh, you know, crisis, problem, oppression. We, we have done this for centuries now because of the patriarchy, whether it is institution of religion, whether it is institution of um, democracy. Every system has something which has gone slowly, slowly, slowly pushed women really in the corner and has become oppressive, especially when it goes into the hands of tyrannical regimes, when it goes into the kind of people who are around, who are really uh, you know, oppressive. We need to understand that women, will, women, wherever they are, today are talking about democratic values. We are talking about, in no uncertain terms, about democracy, freedom, dignity, and also empowerment. Thank you.